Let's do the 2007 free response problem. It's A, B, 1. It's also actually number one on the BC test. So let's look at it, see what it says, and go from there. Let R be the region in the first and second quadrant, so we're in the top two portions, bounded above by the graph of that and below by the horizontal line y equals 2. So before we go any further, let's just go ahead and sketch that, see what it looks like. So uh, here goes number one. Even though I wrote number one up there twice, we'll put it again. And this is calculator active, so we will type it. I've already typed it in, actually. I typed it a little bit differently. Instead of dividing, I put it to the negative one, but you got it. Um, then I hit uh, zoom six, zoom standard, and this was the graph I got. I'm going to go ahead and sketch it so I'm not wasting your time here. So one, two. So here's the line, y equals two. No big secrets there. And here's the other one. It goes all the way up. It actually goes up to 20. It doesn't show on here, but you kind of know it goes to 20 because, well, that's what the function is. So I'm going to write those two equations down. Um, now, it might be a waste of your time to write them down when you're on the test and you're looking at the problem itself, but since I'm going to be referring to it and explaining it, I'm going to do that. So basically, we're dealing with this area right here. So what I really need to do in order to answer part A, find the area of R, in order to find that, I need to know where these two points are know exactly where that is. So I'm going to find the integral from somewhere to somewhere. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and set up what we do know. We do know it's going to be top minus bottom, and the top is clearly the crazy one, 20 over 1 plus x squared, and then minus 2. So it's all that, and then dx. Now the only thing I don't have is this and this. So I need to know what that coordinate is and that coordinate is. And the calculator will definitely tell me that, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you could find this one by hand, and I think I'm going to kind of feeling like I should. So that's where um, these two things meet. So 20 over 1 plus x squared equals 2. Now, this might be a waste of your time on a time to test, but it's a good skill to have because parts of this are are worthy of a, um, multi, uh, a calculator inactive type issue. So like if this type of thing could be calculator inactive, the whole thing would not. I mean, they wouldn't ask you to do that without a calculator because that would involve arctan and some crazy stuff. But anyway, so we'll cross multiply. So 20 equals 2 plus 2x squared. Um, we have 18 equals 2x squared. We divide by 2 and we have 9 equals x squared. So x is positive and negative 3. So there we go, positive 3 and negative 3. So now that I've wasted your time doing something by hand that you knew how to do, I won't waste your time because I will scroll up to the actual answer. There we go. And this is what I got. We'll round to three decimal places, of course. 37.962. Okay, let me take a look at the actual answer key and tell you what they were giving credit for. So before you even start the problem, or before you really, they start grading part A, part B, part C. This was part A, by the way. Um, if you don't have negative three and three right, then, well, you've missed a point. So this is a point right here. There's one point. This is one point for part A, and this is also a point for part A. So we're through part A, and we've already earned three points on this. And again, if you don't have this right, then it's going to screw you up for the rest of the problem. Um, now, they will probably give you credit if these numbers are wrong. They'll, they'll count off that one point, but then calculate the rest of your answer using your incorrect numbers. Sometimes they, they generally do that. Um, nevertheless, get those right. All right, let's move on to part B, see what it says, and go from there. <clears throat> Find the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to take R, capital R, that's the, the area, that's all the stuff we colored right here, and we're going to rotate it around the x-axis. And when we do, it makes this little circular thing that's very hard to draw, but basically we have, I'm reaching for a rubber band, I'm going to find a good one, a big thick ones, and they're not going to work the way I want them to. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this shape, and we're going to rotate it around... So when we rotate it around, I'm going to ignore this too for just a second. So when we rotate it around, that rubber band did absolutely nothing to help you visualize it, did it? Um, when we rotate it around, we're going to make a, well, a circle. So it's going to go from negative 3 to 3, same. And we're going to go 20 over 1 plus x squared. And when we do that, it's pi r squared. So this is our radius. That's how far we are from the outer, the, the, from the inner part, the, the center of our circle where we're rotating this. Well, we're, we're going to rotate this around, and we're going to get this volume, but we're also going to have this little piece in the middle here, this tiny little piece, and it's going to be basically a gap. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a hole that we're not going to be able to count, so we need to subtract 2 squared, and you can put 4, of course, and all that 
is gonna be integrated. We'll just type that in the calculator. So again, here's what happens. We're gonna take the outer radius, square it, subtract the inner radius, and we square it. Now, later on, we might do something where we're subtracting them and squaring the whole thing, and that's a different kind of context. But for now, we're basically gonna subtract away that hole in the middle, and that's why we're squaring them separately. So um, I've actually already done this one as well. I did it right here, and I used a four instead of two squared, but you know, we're all adults. You know what two squared is. And I got 1871.190, put three decimal places, even if it's a zero. So we have that, and we are indeed correct. I tried to draw it over here. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to with that same symmetry when we rotated. Anyway, that's beside the point. Let's do part C. Well, actually, um, you get two points for this, and then you get one point for that. So you get a point if you can just type it in your calculator correctly. All right, part C. The region R is the base of a solid. Okay, so we're building a building, apparently, some sort of three-dimensional thing. Uh, for this solid, the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are semicircles. Find the volume of the solid. The best way I know to explain it is to just start thinking about what the area is. So here goes. The, the area, and I'm just going to write it over on the side. The area of a circle, obviously, is pi r squared. Well, I don't want a whole circle. I want a half of a circle. So this is what I'm dealing with. All right. So um, let's just go ahead and start setting this thing up. And, and this is a constant. So we're going to put it in the front, pi over 2. And negative 3 to 3, because that's how we roll on this problem. And that does not change. And now i got to think about what my radius is. So if we look at this and we think about what we're really doing, we're building this, this three-dimensional figure here where we're just going to kind of swing this up and it's going to come over and it's going to be a semicircle. So, you know, if I was to take this and come out from it, then it would be a semicircle. You can see my scrap paper under there. Um, a semicircle that comes out and a semicircle that comes out and a semicircle. But every time I'm doing that, I'm like, oh, look, a semicircle. I'm, this is actually the diameter of my semicircle. So the diameter of my semicircle is this function minus that function. So let's just kind of go with that idea. So it's going to be this one minus that one. So that's the diameter. I don't want the diameter. I want the radius. So we need to cut that in half. And because of my formula, we need to square it. So this is one of those contexts where we don't square them separately like we did here because there was a hole in the middle. Now we're going to square the entire thing and, of course, divide it by 2. And when we do that, we get, well, this that I typed right there. Let me show you what I had. Um, I went ahead and made that 4. See, I kind of like squared this whole thing on the numerator and then squared that and got a 4. It, I found it easier to type in that way. Just didn't overdo your parentheses. By the way, while that's computing, well, it's done now. Um, but you could say, well, this, of course, is 4, and then that 4 comes out, and you have pi over 8. You could do the same that same thing right there. It's, it's fine. Anyway, 174.268, and that would be cubic units. And let's see exactly what they were looking for on this one. Um, two points for that. And that probably would also include this constant out front because it's kind of important. Um, and one point for that.